Welcome. In this theory lesson, we're going to learn about ergonomics and applying that to concepts. The theory of ergonomics says that we need to consider people, and people come in all different shapes and sizes. They have different physical abilities, different knowledge, expectations, and behaviours. Along with these different sizes, we have a term that we call anthropometrics. In essence, anthropometrics is the study of humans and how we measure that. Here you can see a professional measuring the height of a person. This is one example of gathering anthropometric data. So we have static and dynamic anthropom anthropometry. We have static and dynamic anthropometrics. Static being what are the measurements of a person as they're standing still or as they're not moving, and dynamic being the range of movement of that person's body. As you can see in these examples on this slide, we're considering bending, crouching, reaching, spans, moving with objects, holding objects. We also have specialised areas for anthropometrics for children. In this example, you can see a, plotting, a plotted graph of children in various ages from different types of data, considering eye level, for example, how high could they see over a bench top? How high would they need their countertop to be for reaching? We also consider frequency distribution curves. In this example, you can see we have a 50th percentile in the center, so the average person. But what constitutes an average and how do we gather data from that? In this curve, you can see we're looking at the amount of people that might fit. We're trying to reach the most amount of people in our design. So how many people would fit under that bell curve? This example is in heights and inches. So the, one, the first percentile or one percentile is looking at 62.6 .6 inches and the tallest in the 99th percentile 75.6 feet and inches. So what does the 99th percentile man or woman look like? In this data you can see they're looking at an age range between 20 and 65 years. They're looking at a weight range and they have some data there on their arm span which is a dynamic data and then you can see the static data around their head height or their eye spacing, the 50th, same with the 50th percentile and the 1 percentile. So this book written, The Measure of Man and Woman, is a study on more than 180 anthropometric diagrams. It was written in 1981 and it's used by designers to consider the ranges within what they're designing for. Here's a similar view of the 90th percentile woman, 50th and 1 percentile. And their side view of their capabilities in this dynamic image. Same with the man. And in this front view, we're going to have a look at if you were to design just for this 50th percentile, it would be quite easy. Like us designing for ourselves, we really only have one set of data to consider. So 
If we're saying we're designing for the average or the 50th percentile, what does that mean? What does it mean to be normal? We can add other lines to the normal curve to mark out other percentiles. In industrial design, we talk typically about the 10th and the 90th percentile, or the 5th and the 95th, or the 1st and the 99th. But who should we accommodate for? Who loses in these average ranges? Let's have a look at more of this data. So at 80%, you can see we get everyone who's within the 10th and the 90th percentile. At 90%, we capture everybody within the 5th and the 95th percentile range. And within the 98th percentile, we're capturing everybody within the 1st and the 99th. So, what are we limiting when we take away these people outside of our average range. Who are we limiting? The smallest user? Considering reach can mean that a screw top lid can be spanned by a 5th percentile female while still giving enough contact area with the skin. In this case, the 1st, 5th percentile female is a limiting user. Other reach considerations that are like a door lock, making sure this is no higher than the maximum reach of a small person, or that a seat height does not exceed popliteal height of small users. The popliteal height is a measurement from the underside of the foot to the underside of the thigh at the knees. If we consider clearance, are we limiting the largest user? So clearance can mean that a toothbrush can reach the back molars of a 95th percentile man. In this case, the 95th percentile man is a limiting user. Other clearance examples are that the height of a doorway should be no lower than the height of a tall man, or that the width of an enclosed chair be no narrower than the hips of a large woman. So we want to be able to consider both the female one percentile at the lowest range and the male 99th percentile at the highest range if we're going to make it fair for as many people as possible. Take this Microsoft Adaptive Xbox controller for example. It was originally designed for people who might not have full capabilities of their hands. It took the typical Xbox controller and converted it into this flat finger sensor system, allowing for our 1st to 99th percentile groups. 